Welcome at ET Designs. I found the video of a guy lying in the grass at his backyard and painting a vintage steel bike <laughs> and that looked so funny. I can't wait to show you this video. So let's open a German fast browser and let's check if George, his name is George, can paint a steel bike with a proper paint job. Hello and welcome. Have you ever gotten tired of riding your old scratched up bike? Now there was really nothing wrong with it, but you were seduced by the brand new shiny stuff that pops up in bike stores every year. Latest model, upgrades, but wait, those are really expensive. You can totally change the appearance of your bike by repainting it. Yes, that's true. If you are able to paint a bike, it's not as easy as it sounds. But I'm in good hope that George knows, knows what he's doing and that he can do a proper paint job. In this video, I'll show you how it's done. My name is George Schlackeck and I am the one, the one and only. The one and only George. Yes, I'm the one and only Martin and I'm absolutely interested, George, if you are able to do a paint job I like. So let's go ahead and let's check your frame. Last fall I ended up with a bike frame that had been condemned by our local bike shop. It's a road bike frame from the 1980s. It kind of got me excited, but the frame was condemned and most concerning was there was some paint that had chipped off a large flake, probably due to a strong impact like a crash. A cracked lug was suspected, so the bike shop couldn't refurbish this frame for liability reasons. It was in the scrap pile. If you ask yourself what's that green water in the bottle, that's German fast browser and the taste is wood rough. That's what we drink in Germany. It's made by my local brewery and I like it as much as painting bikes because I like the color. The taste is horrible but the color is nice. Well, this is how I enjoy my bikes. I built them. I got this piece from our community bike shop for free. There is suspected to be a tiny crack in one of the lugs. I'm going to try and show you where that is. Can you see the crack? I think that's only a scratch. It doesn't look like a crack. It's not common that a lug cracks in this area. And even if it's a crack in the lock, it's uh, not so bad because these um, frames are fire braced and it doesn't mean that the frame is no longer rigid. I'm using these sanding sponges. I also used the fire pit before. What did you do? You used the fire pit? George, you doesn't use the fire pit. Really? You put your bike into the fire pit? <laughs> no, no, again. I used the fire pit before. He put it in the fire pit? George, no, you didn't put your bike in the fire pit. Did you really put it in the fire pit? <laughs> That's what you shouldn't do with a vintage steel bike because vintage steel bikes are fire braced. That means they are made with fire and a torch like this. And guess what happens if you put such a frame into the fire? Yes, it will fall apart and <laughs> that's what you shouldn't do, George. Can we have a video or a photo of a fire braced frame? Uh, yeah, check this. And George, if you put your frame into the fire, you will ruin this frame. That kind of works, but... Uh, it kind of works, George? Not really. kind of works, but yeah, it, it really oxidizes the metal too, so I don't know. It not only oxidizes the metal, it also cracks the metal and it will bend all the way everywhere because these tubes are sometimes very thin and that's not what I can recommend. Don't put your bike into a fire pit or use fire to remove the color. I recommend a media blast because that's the safest way and the best and fastest way to strip the frame. If you have a lot of time and if you are a hobby painter, you can use also these sponges or wet sanding paper, but not on steel frames. Use dry sanding paper on steel frames. That, that is what I do every time. I have a stripping video in the corner if you want to see how to strip a frame by hand, but never use fire on these vintage steel frames. My first step was to remove all the paint from that frame, especially where the damage was suspected. 
After a very close inspection, I found that there definitely wasn't a cracked lug. I think you can see that this works quite well. It only took me minutes now to clean off the feed tube. Yes, it, took only minutes. it takes only minutes to sand these tubes. These are easy, but the locks are complicated. And that's the main part of the work you have to do. And George, I can tell you, it will take much longer to strip the complete frame. Not only minutes. Tubes are easy, but lugs are horrible bad. The part that takes longest are the lug and the small bases between. This frame was actually perfectly good. I got really lucky. At this point, my dream bike was... Can you see the rust? Yes, and this rust's not good. You have to remove the complete rust and... The best thing I can recommend is media blasting to remove all that and if you have a lot of time you can sand it by hand but you have to sand down all the rusted areas because it will come back if you don't remove it. Taking shape in my mind. Good morning. See I got these cranks on eBay, there's a local guy. Uh, yeah, they cost me a hundred bucks. Big dreams. They look nice, yeah. Big dreams, George, but dreaming is a good thing. And dreaming drives you forward and gives you hope and inspiration. So, yeah, these cranks laying by are the inspiration to send down hours for hours. And yeah, that's what he's doing. Now I was going to build a 1980s road bike, a mean, lean and fast one. <laughs> mean and lean, George. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But yeah, he does a good work, sanding by hand. Looks um, professional like. That needs to look as good as it's going to ride. Have you seen his technique? He used a little strip and folded it around and then he can sand the frame like this, the tubes, and that's an easy way to sand down a steel frame. So the first step for me was to continue stripping the frame, cleaning it up real good, and then repainting it. Make it look like new again. I've made good progress. It looks like the frame is almost like 80% or 85% bare. Sanded, but it's all those spots that are most tedious to do with uh, the sanding sponge and the uh, mesh. I guess he learned it the hard way because he know that he has to remove the complete color. If you don't remove the complete color, it can wrinkle when you apply primer or new color and you will ruin the new paint job. So if you want to be on the safe side of life and safe side of painter's life, I can also recommend to remove all of the color every single bit and that makes it easy in the next steps. There's still more to do. Tomorrow I'm going to get out a wire brush on a drill and I'm going to do the rest. For today I've had enough. I'll just call it quits right now. I discovered my wire brush for these hard to reach corners for the, like the dropouts. See? Yes, you can use a wire brush for the dropouts if you have a steel frame. Don't do it on an aluminum frame or a carbon frame. You will, you will ruin the surface. You will destroy the carbon and the aluminum is uh, too soft. It's a soft metal and I can't recommend a wire brush. But if you have steel, hard steel, a wire brush is a good option to clean these dropouts. They're almost done. There are some parts that I have to reach manually with sandpaper and perhaps a hand wire brush. There are some minor nicks in the chain stays. I can see also some rust and oh, maybe it's a good idea to use some rust remover before you start painting because all these little spots will come back even if you use primer. Can you see these, these brown points? All the brown points. And if you want to go professional, you have to remove them. 
Uh, this one probably I'm gonna try and fill it. The rest of the frame looks very good. Maybe later on today I can wipe the frame with alcohol, make sure there's no contamination on the surface, and then put some primer on it. Yes, that's right. What we do, what he's doing is right. Use alcohol to clean the frame. Never use water. It will rust immediately if you have a steel frame. So you can use also brake cleaner or in this case alcohol is a good option. You can use also thinner if you have no more paint on. If you have a painted bike and if you want to paint over the original paint job, don't use thinner. In this case I recommend also alcohol. And yeah, George does it right. Once that is done, I would leave the frame alone for at least a full day and then sand it with 1500 grit sandpaper very lightly and i found on my last repaint that was the secret to ending up with a really nice paint job yes i recommend also sanding the primer because if you want to go high quality you need an absolutely even and smooth surface and you can reach only this when sanding the primer. You can do also a wet on wet paint job, but if you are not a pro and if you have no experience, I don't recommend a wet on wet paint job. I recommend a curing time and sanding the primer after the application. This time I've got yellow engine enamel for the frame. I will not put any clear coat on there. I find it is much easier, much more simple just to go with a one coat finish it's also easier to touch up no matter oh i can tell you clear coat is a good thing it's, it's a protection layer and all my professional paint jobs have only a base coat that's the color and every time a clear coat over the base coat that gives extra protection it's not so easy for diy painters but if you want to do a single color it's also possible so the color is also the lacquer and that seems what George likes to do on his frame. No matter what somebody might tell you, lots of bikes that I've painted, believe me, the paint came off in big splotches. As soon as it would hit something, the paint would crack and all pieces of it would come off. And that what George did wrong or what he learned the hard way is he applied a, a color which is also the lacquer and over this color another layer of clear coat and if you have a color which is the lacquer you have to prepare the color by sanding by wet sanding because if you apply a clear coat on top you have no bond in between the color and the clear coat so you have to decide if you want to use a base coat which is able uh, or which is made for clear coat or if you use a color which is also the the coat the last coat you have to sand it with maybe 1200 grit wet sanding paper and then you can apply the clear coat if you don't do so the clear coat can peel off that was because i had to learn the hard way how to paint them and i'm gonna try to guide you through it bit by bit and then you'll see the result hopefully within a few weeks or a reasonable amount of time i can show you the finished still product sanding. <laughs> nice bike. but i like that it's a lot of effort he puts in this frame George has no gloves on. Can you see that? The brake clean is not good for your hands. It dries the hands and you should wear gloves when working with alcohol or brake cleaner or any of these solvents. I use brake cleaner to clean my frame before I prime it. I try to be very thorough. Don't touch these gloves with bare hands. I recommend to use rubber gloves. And you can also uh, make sure that you don't touch the frame with your bare hands and your hands are greasy, you have grease on your hands and you will transfer it onto the frame. So when you start painting, wear gloves, that's what the pro would do. I paint from adhering properly. The better I can clean this, the better my final result will be. Okay, one last Absolutely look at clean. the frame, the way that's it looks perfect. before painting. Check this, all the locks are clean. That's absolutely perfect. He put a lot of effort and time in this frame. I cleaned it off as good as I can and as good as I believe to be sufficient. It is not perfect, but it will be a very nice bicycle. Check this, it's absolutely clean. Absolutely perfect preparation. That's what I like.
Ah, the dropouts, I can see some red, George. There's an area you had to send down. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay for this frame. Very important. I got primer. I'll make sure I shake it really good. This is uh, left over from last year's. <laughs> yes, if you use spray cans, shake them well to mix the color inside the can. That's very important. And I will link you the stuff George uses underneath the video in the video description if you want to order it yourself. What I recommend for a high quality paint job is a two component system. It costs much more, maybe three to four times of a normal spray can, but it's much more durable. So buy yourself a two component primer and it prevents your steel frame perfect from rusting and it gives an absolutely hard surface. And if you want to go the cheap way, you can use also the one component system. It's fine, but the quality is not so good and it will be not so durable as a two component system. So find stuff in the video description, two component stuff and also one component stuff. If you want to go pro, I recommend the two component stuff. Paint job. I'm going to be needing a little more than this, but I can use this up. It's a good primer. You can see it's beautifully color automotive. I will link you also the Duplicolor Primer if I find it, so you can use the same color George uses in his video. As it seems, George, your lawn needs a new haircut. <laughs> Where's your lawn now? Oh, very thin coat on. And guys, what I can tell you is the paint stand is horrible. It's it's. Uh, the height of the paint stands absolutely horrible. You will see it later. So make sure you you build yourself a little uh, more comfortable paint stand. The bike should be in height in the height of your of your nipples. <laughs> That's a good height for the frame. So you can paint underneath the frame, also on top of the frame. Make sure the top tube is in line of your eyes, so you can see on top and you can see underneath the frame. Check my videos. That's my perfect height and that's a comfortable height. But let's see what George does with his paint stand. Coat there you can see it's much more. Well, it has to dry maybe less than a few minutes really, just to be tacky. And then I'll put a second coat on and that should be good enough. It's not good to breathe. If you use spray can primers, they are uh, very thin, not like professional primers. So I recommend also maybe three layers, two to three layers a minimum. So you have a good surface and you need the surface and a lot of material because you'll have to sand it down a little bit if you want to flatten it. So apply maybe two to three layers of primer. Here you can see it, it's absolutely not comfortable. <laughs> He's lying in the grass and check out how he's holding the can. He holds the can with a stump. I've never seen that before. George, that's the trigger finger and it's called trigger finger because to push the trigger. But maybe it's hard to push it all the time and he uses the thumb, the thumb technique. And here I will try it as well. But uh, that's a better position to spray all in all the edges. But if you can do it with your thumb, that's also a solution. But you have to train your thumb up and down, up and down, up and down. Give a thumb up, give a thumb down, give a thumb up, give a thumb down. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying in the grass. That's such a nice picture. Imagine George has a bikini on and yeah, we are in the South Seas and drinking some sex on the beach or coconut kiss. <laughs> That's what I like. That's so funny. Oh, jeez. And one point, that's not the right mask. Buy yourself a proper paint mask with minimum and a one filter. That's a filter which can filter the chemicals. He has only a dust mask and I can't recommend to paint with such a mask. Buy yourself a proper paint mask when you paint also with spray cans. 
because that's no fun that's for your safety and safety first so George that's not good buy yourself a spray mask next time yeah of course with this being Edmonton just as I got this primer on it started to rain so I had to act fast yeah if you paint outside make sure there's nice weather if it starts to rain you'll ruin the paint job you get drips of the color uh, the rain will drip the color and that's a problem so maybe you have a spot in your garage to paint that's much better and if you paint outside all the flies like color he will paint on a yellow color and flies like light colors like yellow like red and you will have hundreds of flies into the wet paint and that's horrible and uh, see so yeah, I put a, a screw here propped it against the shelf there is a plastic bag there the primer is dry to touch and it looks very nice it looks very smooth any imperfections in it uh, I can fix that later still tomorrow I'm going to have a quick over touch up the primer where it needs it if it does and if not and if the weather is good tomorrow afternoon then uh, I'll be applying the finishing coat before I do that I'll give it a special treatment and you'll see what exactly that is yes he waited one day uh, to cure the primer that's a uh, good time spot I recommend also maybe uh, 12 to 24 hours depending on your primer minimum curing time and then you can go ahead with sanding. Today may be the day that I'm going to paint my bicycle frame. It all depends how long it's going to take me to do the sanding of the primer. Primer is on and it turned out really nice. The frame already looks like a brand new one. It looks a whole lot better than when I started with it. Hope you agree. And here's the, the secret. See what I do is I use this sandpaper. This one is 1500 grit this is almost a little bit too fine the other one in the water there is 600 the point is just to get the glaze off the primer so that it's more tacky yes that's right uh, if you sand the primer you get a tacky surface for the next layers I recommend an 800 grit George will use a 600 grit it's a bit too rough and there's a risk that you remove too much primer to bare metal so you have to primer again Use 800 grit, that's a little bit better. Also, if you have no experience uh, sanding down primers. And I put my paint on there and it does make a big difference. You don't want the paint to flake off in big chunks. That's what happened to me on previous paint jobs. So I pay a lot more attention to the prep work now and it doesn't matter how long it's gonna take me, it's gonna get done right. paint will really stick to this frame. I'm trying to get a finish that is as durable as a brand new paint job. And yes, to all the new painters out there, that's what the pro does, sanding hours for hours. It's not applying color. Applying color is fun, yeah, but if you think that's painting, that's not the truth. The truth of painting is sanding. That is hard to do with a rattle can because it takes quite some time for the paint to actually harden. So after this is painted, it will be left alone for a minimum of a week, perhaps longer than that. I don't even really have the parts yet to build this bike, so I have plenty of opportunity to acquire those. That's right. If you use a one component system, it takes a long time to cure and it's soft for a long time. So he will wait a week. That's a good spot time spot I recommend also maybe one to two weeks in a warm room 20 degrees Celsius I'm not sure what's in Fahrenheit so put it maybe in your basement in a warm room for drying before you put all the bikes or all the parts on the bike and before you put the bike together just finished wiping down the frame with a rag but in order to really be sure that there's no contaminants on the frame I will now wipe it down once again I'll be using methyl be hydrate. Be using that. In some cases you can remove the primer using methanol or methyl hydrate because that's a one component primer and yeah that's a risk 
but if it works, it works. So try it on a, on a piece of steel before you wrap down your frame and if you rem before you remove the primer you have sanded. That's what I recommend. Do every time test pieces, never test on the frame you paint. That'll also make sure that any water that might be left on there will evaporate. And what I can recommend to use is brake, uh, brake cleaner before and it's much safer to use also the brake cleaner to clean the primer, not this methanol. That's, that's a risk, I think. But it seems that it couldn't harm the primer. Ah, there's a little bit primer. Can you see the primer in the towel? Very important. Paint a very good shape. There are walls inside there that mix. Is that George on his shirt? Check his shirt. That's George or not? Looks like George. <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> Check George, he's such a supermodel lying in the grass. Bikini model George, that's what I like. <laughs> that is absolutely funny. <laughs> yeah. Next time, build a comfortable paint stand. <laughs> oh man, bikini painting. <laughs> that's what I want to see, George. So, yeah, I have fun, but uh, if you want to do a high quality paint job, it's also important to paint underneath the tubes. And it seems very difficult to do with such a low paint stand. And, uh, Listen to my words, if you paint outside, the flies will love this color, this bright yellow. They think they are flowers, that the frame is a flower and they will sit on top of the fresh color and you have hundreds of flies in your paint job. Believe me, I've done this also as I were a kid and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's so nice. See, this is the frame, the way it looks right now. <laughs> Upside down here. Looks not so bad. Shiny, glossy. Yeah, and that's what you, if you put effort in your frame, that's the result. That's all the effort in sanding why it's so glossy. It's not application of color, it's the sanding process. George, that's a good job. I like it. Thumbs up. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it Look looks at pretty that. smooth. Look at the shine of the color. That's perfect. You can see you can, you can see his studio uh, lightings in the in the glossy paint job. That's perfect, George. For a DIY paint job in the garden, and definitely shiny. Now, there's a lot more to a bike than just a frame, as you know. So to all the painting kits outside, now you have seen what it takes to paint a frame properly. It takes hours of sanding, maybe days. And if you put a lot of effort in your paint shop, you can do the same like George. Don't put your frames into the fire pit. I got goosebumps. <laughs> can you see that? I have goosebumps only talking about the fire pit and a frame in a fire pit. But thanks for watching. Check also George's video. I will link it in the video description underneath the video, the original video. Thanks George for amusing me. I had a lot of fun. And if you want to see professional paint shop, check my channel, check my other videos. I have also spray can paint shops with more information about spray can painting. And thanks for watching. See you in one of my next painting videos, hopefully. And goodbye.